Hi, Josh and Mike from Criterion Barrels here. We're going to go over part four of the Accurizing the AR-15 video series. And today that's going to include what, Mike? We're going to go over the final steps of installing the gas tube, the gas block, and the muzzle device. Um, these, are, these are areas that seem to be very simple. However, how you install them can have a major effect on accuracy. And one of the things we didn't go over in the earlier uh, videos is how the same principles that apply to accurizing the AR-15 also apply to the 308 AR, if not more so. I think it definitely has even more so of an effect. Um, AR-10s, just because of the, you know, the added weight of the components, I find that they tend to be a little bit more sensitive uh, when you're trying to accurize them. All right, let's pan over to our armorer Nick in the gunsmithing room and see what he's working on. All right, so to get things rolling, Nick is going to install the gas block into the barrel. Uh, we have a nice little feature uh, dimpling opposite of the gas port that allows you to index that, that gas block very easily. A really good way to ensure that you're getting the proper tension on your gas block itself is just to use two fingers and a small Allen wrench. It really doesn't need to get cranked down very tightly into the barrel. Again, anytime you're touching the barrel making contact with it or pushing, putting pressures on it, you will be affecting the harmonics. Everything affects accuracy, so we're not going to want to crank that screw down too tight because otherwise you're going to start displacing metal. So right here, Nick is showing us the set screw that is used with this particular type of gas block. As you can see, it's got a flat face to it. There are set screws available on the market that have a pointed face, and generally those will cause pressure points to the, the, the rifling, so you'll actually find a tight spot when you gauge it. So it's important to make sure that you're using a nice flat face set screw if you are using the set screw approach. Another area we frequently encounter issues with is when people actually pin the gas block, uh, which basically involves drilling a hole through the gas block and the barrel and then driving a set pin through the gas block and the barrel. Uh, when you do this, you displace some of the material in the barrel itself and that can create a tight spot in the bore and that will affect your bullet as it travels down the bore itself. Yeah, you'll get a lot of people who are wrapped around the axle with making sure that gas block is locked into place. I mean, with, with uh, pinning and, you know, applying a lot of thread locker, just spraying it down with red Loctite, it, it's not really necessary. So the next step in the assembly process is the handguard installation. And as you can see here, Nick locked it into place, leaving a little bit of clearance between the handguard and the receiver. The reason he leaves that little gap between the handguard and the receiver is once again, as you're going to put pressures on your handguard during firing from different positions or using barricades or a bipod, uh, it puts torque on the handguard itself. Any torque that you would apply to the upper receiver again can affect the harmonics of the gun as a whole. I don't know if we can see it from this angle, but there is uh, another component that you really don't want touching the handguard. What is that, Mike? That would be the gas tube itself. Um, if the gas tube makes any contact with the handguard, it actually is riding on the gas block, which is attached to the barrel. Also, we want to make sure that the uh, ejection port door rod is not making contact with the handguard itself. Um, there's frequently, you know, with different handguard designs, you'll drive that handguard right up to the port door rod, and that can put an inordinate amount of torque on your handguard, which is attached to the barrel nut, which locks in your barrel, so. I mean, they're all very minor sub-assemblies that are contacting each other, but they play a, a, a minute role in, in tightening up that accuracy if you play your cards right. Absolutely, and you know, we're not talking about shrinking groups by an inch at this point, we're talking about fractions of an inch. So, I mean, we're, you know, we're trying to get as tight groups as possible and uh, this is just one of the areas that we frequently encounter issues with, with certain handguard designs. So Nick is making sure here that everything is nicely aligned with the, the handguard, because you don't want that pressing up against either the uh, gas block or the gas tube. Once again, you want to have that gas tube free-floated the whole way through the, the handguard and the receiver. One of the most important components that you can choose is a good handguard, but not so much for the handguard itself, but for the barrel nut. How that barrel nut locks your barrel into place, and then making sure that it doesn't contact your gas tube, and allows your gas tube to free float as it goes into the upper receiver, is something that I always look for when I'm building a rifle. 
that gas tube should almost wiggle as it enters into the upper receiver. So following the installation of the handguard, Nick is going to start work on installation of the muzzle device. And basically what he's doing now is screwing it in without any shims or crush washers just to see exactly where it indexes. Uh, normally those muzzle devices will come standard with a shim kit. Uh, they can also be purchased separately from a number of retailers. Uh, that allows you to change how the muzzle device indexes on the barrel. This is another really important area to look at when you're trying to accurize your AR-15 or your AR-10 style rifle. If you over torque your muzzle device, you can actually restrict the bore. And if you under torque it, you're going to be creating a little bit of wiggle in the barrel to muzzle device fitment. So these shims are absolutely essential if you plan on running a suppressor versus a crush washer, which would be acceptable if you're just planning on running the muzzle device bare. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to make sure that you're not going to get any type of baffle strike inside of your suppressor and ultimately that your muzzle device is perfectly in line with the bore. It's a little bit more time consuming, but to me it's worth it if you're going to be building your rifle properly. All right, now that the muzzle device is torqued into place and locked down, our upper assembly is complete. So Nick has reoriented the upper receiver to fit well with his uh, crescent wrench here. So he's going to lock that down in place, place a little bit of torque on it to get everything nice and aligned. So now that the upper is built up, Nick is going to install this bubble level, which will help us adjust for cant and make sure we keep everything nice and consistent. Canning the rifle to the left or the right can cause groups to string horizontally, so that's something we definitely want to avoid. So now that we've checked headspace, we've selected components based on um, their ability to accurize the rifle. Uh, we've also uh, installed the barrel and we have uh, assembled the complete upper uh, with the handguard, the gas block, the muzzle device, and the bubble level. Uh, that kind of uh, wraps up our accurizing the AR-15 video series. It sure does. You know, guys, every single thing affects accuracy, and these are just some of the tricks that we've picked up along the way to help build the most accurate platforms that we're able to. Uh, and if you have any questions in the future, please give me a call. I am more than happy to answer any questions or walk you through a build, give you any other tips or tricks. And, uh, you know, that's what we're here for. We're all about accuracy, and we want to be able to help you achieve that accuracy. Yep. So the email address to reach us through would be mike at criterionbarrels.com or over the phone at 262-628-8749. Well, thanks for joining us here for the AR, Accurizing the AR-15 video series, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you here in the future.